Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Game Changer. Good morning. It's Thursday and we are trapped in transition. Day four or day two for Diane and I <clears throat> or day four for Diana because she she watched all the uh, other episodes. Gave you guys the cliff so notes. Thoroughly. Hey, I was just pondering on, I don't remember if I said it yesterday or if I just thought about it and put it in my notes yesterday, but you know, don't allow transition to cause you to be comfortable to the point where you become complacent. Mm. And um, that was something that just kind of for me resonated with me. You know, transition's meant to purify you, refine you, and grow you. And Mm. so don't despise or be upset if you find yourself because take great joy because you're going to come out purified, refined, and have growth in whatever area. So If you get nothing else, we're starting it with that. Hang on to that and meditate on that. Amen. You got a lot of stuff. I know you wrote some notes down or you talked about some things in the car on the way here too. I figured we'd talk about transition and look at it from the perspective of a few different people in the Bible. You know, we talked about transition. You you mentioned um, on the way here, we were talking uh, about transition and that, you know, we're supposed to be, we talked about being transformed, you know, in transition yesterday. And, you know, we, um, you, you mentioned sometimes we give up in transition. Sometimes yeah. we, you know, we look at it and we, you know, we, we opt out or, and I was, I was thinking, what was the comment you said? And I, 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 I came back, go ahead. What was the comment you said? Cause you were talking, oh, no. which one I said so many you awesome did. ones. They were, they were really good this morning, but um, I said transition, you know, it's meant you know, that to connect. Yeah. So it's going to connect, you know, it's a connector. Mm-hmm. Transition is a connector. We're, st- we're, I, you know, I always view it as this middle ground. And <clears> once <throat> I go beyond that, what's behind me is behind me. And yes, of course, forgetting those things which are behind, right? But transition is meant to connect. And it means it's connecting your past, your present, and your future. So recognize that and don't be afraid. Okay, where am I at? Now, where have I come from? And that actually could take give you great courage, right? And great strength and great joy and great pride and actually re-encourage you to go, where have I come from? Where am I at? And where am I headed? And allow transition to be that connector mm-hmm. between the two. Yeah, and then you then we were, they were talking, and that's what she said. She said it's designed to connect you, but um, a lot of times we look for comfort in the transition, and, you know, you said you can't get comfortable. Well, then a lot of times... You have to we, take comfort. I said, we have to take comfort in take knowing comfort. that the Lord is with us, right? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for He is with me, right? He never leaves me or forsakes me. He goes before me. He's above me. He's beneath me. He's beside me, right? He's on the right hand. He's on my left hand. So He's with you. So take comfort, but don't get comfortable. There is a difference, right? <clears throat> you can walk into somebody's home and feel a comfort or a peace, like you walk in. It's kind of interesting in the house that we purchased, um, this particular house that we're in, it was about five years ago. And I walked in and I, we, I went and looked at this house probably four or five times. Now you can't do that. If you're in the housing market, like you see a house you want, don't wait. But it took me a little bit to decide. So I walked in and even though when I walked in, I was like, ah, this style isn't exactly the way I envisioned it. This isn't what I was wanting in this area, whatever. I walked in and I had this, sense of peace and comfort in my heart. Like this is a good place, right? So we walk into certain places and we feel comfort, but there's a difference between while I'm walked in and had peace and comfort, I didn't go sit on their couch and kick my, up my feet and make myself comfortable and lay there. So don't get so, don't take such comfort that you make yourself comfortable and lay there. Because if we lay there, we might not keep moving forward in that transition spot. Yeah, and so where I was going to go with that, and 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 Diana, and I'm talking a little slower today, guys. I'm sorry. I I am completely not sick, but I have that just that that lagging kind of. I'm talking slower. So it's Diana. I think thought Maybe I was she looking. Gets at, sick she thought more I was. Often. No, Dave, you're you're a gener, you're a generally like slower moving person. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> But she thought I was, I think she thought I was searching for words. And so she just, she took over my, my, uh, my sentence there. But what I was look, what I was going for is comfort. So she was talking about being comfortable, but I was, I started to think about that. I'm like, you know, we get comfortable. But the first time when somebody says that, like, oh man, don't get comfortable in transition. The absolute first thing. And sometimes the only thing that we think of 
and that we equate it to is somebody like doing nothing. Somebody, were you getting ready to say something and cut me off? No. Oh, I thought you, you made a noise. Like, I was like, woman, don't cut me off. No, I was kidding. So, hey, but you know what, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we talked about in the car. Like, oh, you'll I, hear about it later. <laughs> just in case everybody wonders. Or now, or, or now, <laughs> on air. But she, but you know, you, you look at it and you think, okay, somebody's doing nothing. Like when you say, don't get, man, that person's getting comfortable in transition. Or you hear a message, somebody would say, that person's, you're talking about that person not doing anything or not stepping out in faith. They're getting comfortable. But here's the way I looked at being comfortable in transition because that's not me. Like I don't just do nothing, you know, um, but my problem is I usually don't, I I do something. And sometimes I do the wrong thing in transition. The comfort aspect is we're trying to make ourselves comfortable in transition. So we're not trying to do nothing in transition. We're trying to quickly escape the pain. Comfort from a standpoint of like when, when my feet hurt, right? The comfort I'm, 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 so I'm out, we're, you know, we're out at Disney world. Right. And you know, I'm talking about parents. I mean, you got kids and you know, you, you, you're walking around, your feet hurt. The first thing you do, right. Is try to alleviate the pain by looking for comfort. What? In a seat. It's not that you didn't leave Disney world. Right, you didn't leave Disney World. Ultimately, what's going to cause your feet to stop hurting is <clears throat> going home and not being a Disney World and walking around on your feet. Your feet are like, man, I wasn't made to walk around all day looking at you know at cartoon characters. You're 49 years old. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, and so that's the ultimate alleviation from from the pain. But yet we look for a temporary fixer. So we search for comfort in the transition. But here's the thing: it was never meant for your comfort. That's where I got it from. Transition is never meant for our comfort. It's meant, like Diana said, for our connection. And that is something I think you need to write down. It's not meant for your comfort. Transition is not meant for your comfort. It's meant for your connection. You said that. I'm scared to speak right now because you've already corrected me. That's right. Um, You know what? I don't know. I have um, the thought that sometimes we don't even realize it's when we take, and, and Dumasani gave it reference to a great scripture in Genesis. Um, so if you can see the comments, make sure you read that. Um, I'll actually probably go and read that story, matter of fact, and refresh myself on that. But um, a lot of times when you're in Disney World and you're walking and you're going and you're treading through life, right, you're going through, it's when we stop to take comfort, to make ourselves comfortable, is when we realize how achy our feet are. So if we keep going and keep our eyes on the prize, keep our eyes on what's next, keep our eyes, you know, trusting in the Lord and focused on where he's leading us, you know, I think we could save ourselves some pain, right, in the middle. Because sometimes if we would have just kept going, we would have made it to the end. But instead we stop to bring comfort to ourselves instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to be our comfort and allowing Him to be with us. And so we feel the pain because we've stopped. Mm. Have you ever felt that? You stop and you feel the pain versus if you would have just kept going. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> you run through it. Yeah. When you keep going, I mean, there, here's the reality. The rea- yeah, the rea- I do it every, every time I work out. You know, I mean, if you stop, you, f- you feel that pain, you think about it, you contemplate it, you dwell on it, you know, and also you have, you have a pause where it's very difficult to start back up again. If you, because look, you're stomping because for instance, using the Disney analogy, I mean, if you're at Disney or you're walking around, your feet hurt, you sit down, it makes it very difficult. Your day's not over and you may get temporary relief to your, to your pain, temporary comfort. And, and, and listen, there's nothing wrong with sitting down there. That, that's kind of a you just used design for a word picture here. I mean, by all means, sit down. I'm going to when I go there and, and, and alleviate the pain on my feet. But the reality is you get back up, your feet start hurting again. Often you don't want to get back up. You don't want to get back up. Mm-hmm. And then you know, here's the worst part. You ever done this? It's like you ever done it when you're almost at the end of the day and you're like, you know, we can kind of sit here. But then you still go, I got to get up and walk to my car. Like, I got to get up and not only walk, but I got to walk through that line, get on that ferry, go back out, go through the parking lot, get in my car, you know, and then I got to drive home. You're starting to think about how far you still have to go. And so I think the, the, so the thing that we talked about today on the way here with transition, and this is the thing you need to understand, don't curse the transition. Don't curse the transition. It's not for your comfort. It's for your connection. And God, and that, and so you can't get from A to B you know, without their, without a transition, you know, the, the transition is, you know, uh, is, is going out of one into another. 
you know, and uh, you can't get from leg one in a relay race into leg two without a transition zone. You can't get that transfer zone, that transition zone. And in that transition zone, God's connecting you with somebody. He's connecting you with something. He's connecting you with, with you know, resources. He's connecting you with strategy. He's connecting you in, in many different ways. And these are divine connections. So transition connects you to the next leg, to the next to the next level. And that's where, where it is. And we need to view that. And so in transition though, transition is painful and it is something that we get into. But I wanted to, I wanted to bring up because we have a couple more days of this. I wanted to look at it and in, in kind of, <clears throat> let's, let's look at it in the lives of a few different people that we're all familiar with. Let's look at it in the lives of like, for instance, David. Okay. King David, you know, and there was, by the way, you can look at it in the life of this David or this Diana or that Mike, that Ezra or you, and there are multiple stories. If you've lived in any any period of time, it doesn't matter if you're 49 or if you're Mike's age, 30 years old, or whatever, that you've lived through multiple transitions and you can tell multiple transition stories. So you can go to the life of David and tell multiple transitions. One that stands out in my mind is probably the most famous transition, and that's when he was in the backside of the desert, you know, tending sheep. And Samuel went to his father's house to anoint a king because God told him to. And when that happened, and when he was anointed, and you know the story where he wasn't even invited to the party. We've talked about that on the podcast. But once he was anointed king, he went through a transition from shepherd boy to king. Now, there were, there, it was a long transition, and it was a painful transition. It was a transition where a lot of things went went bad for him in his life, so to speak. There were, it was painful. It was uncomfortable. It was frustrating. It was, I mean, it seemed probably like he was alone sometimes and he was abandoned sometimes and he seemed like he was defeated sometimes. And it seemed like maybe, you know, Samuel made a mistake and God made a mistake and, and this, isn't, this isn't really the plan sometimes. So that was the transition, but it wasn't meant for his comfort. It was meant for his connection. So let's look at that for a second in the life of David. So between the time he was anointed, factually, anointed king by God Almighty, you are king. Man, what a highlight. What a moment. In front of your brothers, your dad didn't even invite you to the party, but he had to because God said, hey, you know, invite David now. He anoints you the king, you know, after he bypasses all your brothers. I mean, it's your moment, right? And then all of a sudden you settle into transition from the promise to the palace, right? From the, from the, from the po- promise to the purpose. And then there's this transition. I mean, David, David looked at, David wanted to die a couple of times in that transition. And he almost got killed a couple of times in that transition. That's good. Um, you know, I was thinking, what do you do when you're in transition and you're feeling overwhelmed? I think really, if anything, uh, starting this year, um, I would put on the full armor of God every morning and almost um, symbolically, you know, I, that's what I was looking at. I was like, what do you need? Well, the putting that on, you know, facetiously, so it's, it's illustrative, right? But you're putting on the belt of truth, right? So daily you're putting it on so that when you're, you know, hear doubt, so that when you are swayed, when you look to the left or the right, that belt of truth is going to sustain you, right? It's going to, you bring it back to the word of God. You bring it back to truth because that's what's, that's infallible. It's the true word of God, right? It's nothing changes in it. It doesn't change. It doesn't waver with culture or seasons or what's going on. It doesn't change. It's the truth, right? And then the breastplate of righteousness. My gosh, don't we need that sometimes to make sure we remind ourselves that we are righteous. We're the righteousness of God. Are we putting that on daily? Um, The sandals of peace. Are we a peacemaker? Do we walk in and do we bring peace with us, right? And when I say peace, I don't mean, that doesn't mean you're not going to have to hold people accountable or you're not going to have to say certain things. You're not, but I mean, but are we, do we wear the sandals of peace? What is our heart and what is our motive? I am so sorry. Um, uh, Are we holding the shield of faith? right? Have we gotten to our point? Who hasn't in transition held our shield down versus lifting it 
up mm. and firm that you have the shield of faith, right? I, I, no matter what comes against me, I'm going to stand in faith, not with my head bowed, although sometimes you do, right? Sometimes there's seasons where we have our head, but we're holding the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. What is it? The word of God. Are we putting the word of God in our hearts and our hearts? soul and our minds Mm -hmm. so that when those things come we can stand are we doing that daily regularly and then prayer and fasting which a lot of you know a lot of churches and you know a lot of christians right now in the beginning of the year they go through a season of prayer and fasting are you making that part of your regular life in some way shape or form and you know there's different ways to fast i think you have to ask the lord and and ask him what he's causing you whatever is distraction i think fasting prayer and fasting they hand to hand you can't just pray without i'm it's you can't just fast without also taking the time to pray. It's they they are synonymous. You can pray without fast, fasting, right? But I think fasting has to you know be linked with prayer. But what is the Lord asking? I think anything that's causing you to be distracted and keep. Um, Things from being first things first, God first. Mm-hmm. So whatever that is, whether that's social media, whether that's you know eating, you know certain things that aren't good for your body, whatever that is, I think you have to seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got to find out what God is calling you to do, and then do it and make it part of your routine on a regular basis. Whether it's once a quarter, once a month, once a year, twice a year, whatever that is. But I think that's such a simple thing that we heard in in, in kids church. Um, the, the armor of God, but it's important. There's a purpose in it. And I think regularly going through that and making sure that we're applying that and putting it on our lives regularly, I think will help us in transition, right? Because it will keep doubt and, and insecurities. It'll help us build those things up instead of getting comfortable or, or discontent in where we're at. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Can't, I mean, <clears throat> the armor of God is 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 what David put on when he, you know, speaking of David, when he went to fight Goliath. I mean, he tried to put on the Saul's armor, and you know, he defeated Goliath really through the armor of God, you know, t- uh, figuratively speaking. And um, so, let's look at another. So, th- so the life of David. I mean, is is one example. I mean, we we've, we've talked often about the life of Joseph. You know, I mean, the Bible's full of people who went through and were trapped, so to speak, in transition. And, you know, the life of Joseph where, you know, you, you go from the dream, right, to the destiny, so to speak. And he was a dreamer in between the time of the dreams that God gave him. I mean, these are vivid dreams that caused, you know, his family to even turn their back on him. All the way fast forward into the time where his destiny, you know, being uh, the second person in charge of Egypt, you know, um, you know, helping through his wisdom and listening to the Lord and uh, declaring, you know, and interpreting dreams, he was able to um, lay out the blueprint that God gave him for preserving this the, <clears throat> the the people during the famine and during the prosperous seasons. But during that time, there was tons of of transition, and, it, and you can only imagine that. I mean, how many have had a dream, you know, or dreams? And then the devil, okay, comes in and begins to chip away at your dreams. And by the time he's done, by the time you've gone through the years of transition, you, the dream is the dream's not as vivid as it was. You know, the, the it doesn't you, you 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 don't remember some of the details that you used to remember. Am I, am I speaking to anyone? You don't. You know, it's cloudy. The the vision is is not what it used to be. And, you know, that's, I can relate to you there. And so can Joseph. <clears throat> Joseph was a dreamer, but out of all the transitions, and here's the craziest thing. If you look at the life of Joseph, you know, the Bible doesn't, I mean, it, it happens so fast in the series of stories in the books. I mean, it's like, <clears throat> but it was, a, but it was a, it was a process of life. <clears throat> so even though it happened in, you know, in, in a, in a small segment of the books of the Bible, it was, it was like your life or my life. And it was also different seasons. If you think about it, he had the season where he dreamed and then he had the, his, his childhood or his teen years and what have you, where he, he was, he was, his dream was, uh, his dream was frustrated by his brothers and his family and his dream was frustrated by those around him and nobody believing in him and then he went through a different season 
a season that even seemed, you know, dark when he was in the pit. And, but that dark season led to somewhat of a promotion. If you can imagine Joseph, even when he was at Potiphar's house, probably in some ways, because he was promoted to running the house. <clears throat> so even though, he was, even though he was sold into that position, he was promoted into running the house. So if in some ways, during that season, let's call it career season, let's call it Joseph entering into maybe this is what God's called me to do, and Joseph was blessed in that season, and he probably felt like this is a promotion, this is, this is, this is not bad, because he was in control, he was in charge, he was running the place, he had favor. And then he went through another season where he was thrown in a prison because of things that happened there. And then even in the prison, which was a dark season, he was promoted to the person in charge of the prisoners. So even in that season, he was, you know, he was fulfilling things that God had placed in his heart, versions of that dream. And then ultimately he was brought out and promoted and put into a place where I believe his destiny really unfolded. And my question is, you know, can you relate to that? Can you relate to that as a dreamer? You know, the dream looks a little different than it did. You know, do you still remember the code of many colors? Do you still remember, you know, what your father placed over your heart? You know, God, your father placed over your heart when you were a young person or what he spoke to you when you first came to him, what he, what the, you know, what was burning in your heart. And I, you know, and that's interesting because transition, transition will cause you sometimes to forget the details of your dreams. You know, when you, I never thought about it that way, but um, that says to me what I heard when you were talking about the story of Joseph is in the palace, he was the one that ended up being in control and leading. And then in this dark place, which tells me the giftings and callings and talents of God follow you wherever you are in the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. That even no matter where you're at, if you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, if you trust the Lord and still seek him, his giftings and talents and purpose and calling is there with you because he's with you in both places where you know, Joseph could have just sat there and died, right? He could have just said, oh, this is, you know, God promised this. I was on this high of highs, and now here I am in this prison. He didn't let that stop him from fulfilling his calling. So in that season, he was called to those people, to those prisoners, to lead them. He had a gifting of organization, yep. leadership, leadership. Um, he probably was able to see like how things work, how to, how to, con you know, how to oversee those things. So he had that with him, no matter where he was at. And that's, that's, we forget that because when we're in those low places, we forget that that doesn't change the giftings and the talents and the callings of God on our life, but yeah. it should cause us to press into him more because in a season you will break out of that. It's a connector. It's connecting you. Amen. Hey, um, Absolutely. So, so we're talking, and tomorrow's going to be <clears throat> the wrap-up of this series, Trapped in Transition. But this morning, you know, um, uh, it's Thursday, and we, we see some people watching on uh, YouTube and Facebook, and you guys that are watching us live here um, on Thursday. Um, we got a couple more minutes here left in the, in the podcast. We're talking about Trapped in Transition. We're talking about... Um, you know, the, the, what happens in a transition. And you and I were talking on the way here, you know, about... Don't let it make you comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Take comfort, but don't don't get comfortable. And, and and don't seek don't seek the wrong kind of comfort. Don't seek comfort. Don't seek comfort, but take comfort. It's interesting. It's different. And I know we're out of time until tomorrow. But don't seek comfort. Take comfort. What is comfort? Comfort is the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being the Comforter. And so that just that just came to me. Maybe we'll expound upon that more tomorrow as we wrap the series up. But don't don't seek comfort. Take comfort. And you know because when we seek comfort, we're 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 looking we're looking whatever that we can grab, whatever we can whatever pain reliever, whatever we can take. That I got to get this pain to go away. I got to get this, and I get it. I get it. Believe me, I get it. But the reality is, every form of pain reliever that I've ever tried to seek after that wasn't Jesus always left me with more pain. 
never did never did remove the pain so don't don't seek comfort take comfort and comfort in knowing this that 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 God's got you that his holy spirit sees you that Jesus died for you and that he loves you and i'm telling you you're not you're not you're not seeking you're not you're not seeking comfort in transition it's not a place for your comfort it's a place for your connection god's going to bring you out of this if you trust him and I believe that with everything in me. And um, we're going to take some ground. Amen. You guys feel that? We're going to take some ground. Father, I just I just pray right now, God, for everybody watching and listening. God, YouTube, Facebook. God, those that are going to be listening. God, the, um, on uh, the Spotify and Apple Podcasts, God, and Google Podcasts. Those that are going to be watching this. Any clip that we post. God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would just help us view the transition God, through your eyes. Help us view the transition through your eyes. God, give grace where grace is needed. Give strength where strength is needed. God, and I just pray for the purpose of every person, God, that can hear this right now. And I just ask, God, that you would just be with them. God, I pray for families right now. And I pray, God, God, that we would step up this, this season right now, that we would walk, God, as your children, that we would, that we would, that we would step up, God, and take the, the, the the areas that you're placing in front of us, God. I just, I believe that. And the transition is a place of connection. You're connecting people even right now. And God, there's people that are wondering if the connections, those God connections, those is, is, is this a God connection? I, I, I just ask you to just seek the Lord and ask him. And I pray God, pray God that you give him confirmation today, one way or the other, if those are God connections. And I thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. I'm just going to finish this, beloved. <clears throat> this is First Peter 4, 12 through 19. Beloved, think it not strange conce- considering concerning the fiery trial, the transition period, the doubt, whatever that, that is for you, this fire, fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice in as much as ye partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. You'll have exceeding joy on the other side. Amen. Amen. Mike. Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys are enjoying the series and we will be back to wrap the entire thing up tomorrow. So make sure that you guys tune in. Really quick, I have a few things I want to run down before we let you guys go. We have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning that you guys can opt into. It is completely free. You can text the letters EZGC to 813-522-3356. If you're live with us on Facebook or YouTube, we always appreciate you guys being here. But if for any odd reason you cannot make it to the live streams, you can always keep up with us in two ways. Number one, you can go to YouTube, search Game Changer Podcast Live, hit the subscribe button on our channel, and then hit the bell so that you get notified because we upload the replays of these episodes every single day at 3.30. You can also subscribe to us on your favorite audio podcasting platforms. The biggest one that we push is Apple Podcasts, but whichever one you prefer to listen on, make sure that you hit the subscribe button on our feed because we are there. If you're listening to this episode or watching this episode on replay, you guys can always come and join us live when we do the recordings of these episodes at 8.30 a.m. EST on Facebook and YouTube Live. Whichever one you prefer, we are there. So you can search Game Changer Podcast Live at 8.30 a.m. EST Monday through Friday and we will show up in your feed. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram. We post short by size clips of podcast episodes, phone wallpapers, shareable graphics of quotes from the show, and much, much more. Make sure that you guys subscribe, um, follow us on Instagram and any other social media platform out there that you guys prefer to use. But thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow to wrap up the series. And on that note, we out.